Now at four, a deadly crash shuts down a busy Lexington road. We're live at the scene with the breaking news alert. Gloomy thunderstorms on the move across the Bluegrass State yet again. I'm tracking torrential downpours just ahead. Two boys are in the hospital because of severe sunburns. Why their mom says their daycare is responsible. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 4. Good afternoon. I'm Jennifer Palumbo. Strong storms are dumping a lot of rain in parts of the bluegrass this afternoon. Here's a live look at downtown Lexington, where one storm has moved through and another is on the way. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey shows us what's on the first alert defender. And Chris, it looks a lot different here at the station than it does downtown. Yeah, it really does. We're getting in on a very heavy rain producing thunderstorm right on top of us, Jennifer. Uh, we'll show you what that looks like in a moment. Here's the setup, though, across central and eastern Kentucky with those thunderstorms similar to territories what we were talking about yesterday most of that interstate 75 corridor strong storm to the south of liberty showers then extend back to the northeast into parts of lincoln county over toward lancaster into garrett county here's a very intense thunderstorm that is going to move across the eastern part of boyle county why is that important boyle county you've already picked up in some cases just to the east of danville between two and three inches of rain you've got another big time soaker that is on the way so eastern boyle County, western parts of Garrett County. We'll have to watch out for some high water potential as that storm makes its way on in. Here's a little thunderstorm that worked its way right across the downtown Lexington area. It has parked itself on top of the station here, Winchester Road, Hamburg Pavilion area. Here is our view at the station, uh, and this view, by the way, has improved over the past minute or so. Heavy rains on Winchester Road over toward the Hamburg Pavilion area. Another strong thunderstorm. On top of the downtown Frankfurt area. Frankfurt, yesterday at this time, we had a strong thunderstorm on top of us as well. Additional thunderstorms now. Cynthiana back toward Covington. Whatever is out there is coming at us, Jennifer, from northwest to southeast. And again, local high water issues. The main threat as we go through the evening, we'll keep tracking the storms that are developing. Thanks, Chris. We're following a breaking news alert that's new at four. Lexington police are working a deadly crash right now. It happened about 2.15 this afternoon on Bryan Station Road at Johnston Road and involved three vehicles. Garrett Weimer is live with the breaking details. Garrett. Jennifer, I'm standing here on Johnston Road as close to the scene as police will allow us. Police tell us the blue car that you can see right over my right shoulder was pulling onto Bryan Station Road from Johnston Road here when that crash happened. Two other cars driving in opposite directions on Bryan Station Road were also part of that crash. Police, though, do not know what caused the crash. Police do say four people in total were in the three cars. No official word yet on how bad those injuries are, but we do know the Fayette County coroner is here on scene. We're told Bryan Station Road will be closed for the next couple of hours while the accident reconstruction unit is on scene here trying to figure out just what exactly happened and what exactly caused that crash. Live in Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. We'll have another live report from Garrett coming up on WKYT News at 5. Also new at 4, the roof of a Lexington church has collapsed. The pastor at Palomar Baptist Church on Fort Herod's Road tells us they'd noticed issues with the roof and wall back in the spring and had moved their services to another part of the building. They were working with the insurance company to try to figure out how to fix the roof when it collapsed this afternoon. No one was injured, but fire investigators are trying to determine now if the rest of the building is safe. A Central Kentucky house has been condemned in connection to a vicious dog attack. Investigators say Chris Pope owned seven dogs that attacked a woman this week in Lincoln County. Danville police arrested Pope yesterday. They also raided a home on Old Shakertown Road, where they found about a dozen more dogs living in filthy conditions. WKYT's Victor Puente tells us how those dogs are putting a strain on the Boyle County Animal Shelter. It's one of our other top stories at four. The 12 dogs taken yesterday are being kept here at the Boyle County Animal Shelter. This is the second time they've had to house and feed dogs belonging to Christopher Pope. The seizure came after Pope was arrested on harboring vicious animal charges out of Lincoln County. Police there say seven of his dogs attacked a woman, nearly killing her. That woman, Loretta Stevens, is still recovering at UK Hospital. Danville police say when they arrested Pope, they found 12 dogs at his home on Shakertown Road. That home has been condemned. 
Those dogs, five adult females and seven puppies, are being held at the Boyle County Animal Shelter. This is the second time they've had dogs belonging to Pope. They previously held the seven dogs from the Lincoln County attack for three months after he was charged with animal abuse. Those dogs were given back to him as part of a plea agreement. I know that the judicial system is working and doing the right thing and they're doing what they're supposed to do, which they always do, but on a more human level or a more humane level, it can be frustrating to have your space taken up where you cannot use it for uh, animals that potentially could find a home. The Boyle County attorney told me he's meeting with Danville police tomorrow to determine if Pope will face new charges. In Boyle County, Victor Puente, WKYT. Loretta Stevens' daughter told us her mother is doing better and may get to go home tonight or tomorrow. Two people charged in a Lexington man's murder went before a judge this afternoon. Police say Charles Patton, Caitlin Conway, and Demarcus Harris broke into Darnell Bates' home on Addy Street last October and shot him when he tried to fight back. Patton and Conway have already been arrested, but Harris is still on the run. The victim's neighbors hope police find Harris soon. He's gotten away with it so far. Until he gets caught, he's gotten away with it. All three suspects are charged with murder and robbery. Two weeks before his murder, Bates had been promoted to general manager of a car wash on New Circle Road. Our reporters are working on a number of other stories for WKYT starting at 4.30. Amber Philpott joins us from the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Good afternoon, Amber. Good afternoon to you, Jennifer. A woman is dead after floodwaters washed her car into a massive sinkhole. Flooding washed away a chunk of Black Hawk Road in Trigg County. Rescuers found the woman's car in the sinkhole. A family member who was part of the rescue team found her body about three hours later. The sinkhole is 60 feet wide and 20 feet deep. We're going to have more on this story. Coming up on WKYT News at 4:30. Some people in a Lexington neighborhood are upset. The state is moving a probation and parole office into their area of town. The office is currently downtown, but will soon uh, be in, located in a building at the Palomar Center. The state says it needs a bigger space, and their current office is deteriorating. Coming up on WKYT News at 6, you'll hear from some people who don't want that office in their neighborhood. And it is almost time for another event to honor the memory of a woman. Killed in Russell County. Sarah Hart was killed in 2012 while she was out for a morning run in Russell County. The annual run with All Your Heart Race will be this weekend in her memory. The race raises money for a scholarship fund set up in Sarah's name to help students who want to be a pharmacist just like she was. You'll hear from Sarah's father coming up on WKYT News at 5 30. That is a look at some of the news in progress. Jennifer, back to you. Thanks, Amber. Now to stories making headlines across the nation at four. A University of Cincinnati police officer who shot a driver during a traffic stop is now charged with murder. A grand jury has indicted Officer Ray Tensing on a murder charge for the deadly shooting of Samuel DeBose. Prosecutor Joe Dieter says Tensing purposely killed DeBose and should never have been a police officer. Dieters believes Tensing lost his temper. It's an absolute tragedy. Um, in the year 2015 that anyone would behave in this manner. It was senseless. According to the police report, Tensing claimed he was dragged by the car and forced to shoot DeBose. The UC Police Department has fired DeBose, or rather has fired Tensing. An Oklahoma daycare has been closed and police are investigating after a mom says her sons received severe sunburns. The two boys are now in the hospital being treated for second and third degree burns. Will Dupree talked to their mom and we want to warn you some of the images are graphic and disturbing. Doctors are trying to ease the intense pain that seven-year-old Connor is dealing with right now. His mother, Shauna Oxford, says the situation is even more overwhelming because his five-year-old brother, Trey, Your shoulders hurt too, Bob. also has severe burns covering his body. You know, I can't explain what it's like to be a mother and have your kids, you know, asking you why this happened and, Mom, please make it stop. And, you know, even to the point of begging me not to go back to work because they don't want to ever go to daycare again. Oxford says her boys complained of sunburns when she picked them up Friday from Happiness is a Learning Center. 
She says the daycare took her boys to the splash pad that recently opened in Benita. She claims the daycare let them play outside almost all day without any sunscreen. Uh, yeah, they were, it was horrible. Wayne Broadway is Connor and Trey's grandfather. He says two hospitals treated and released his grandsons over the weekend, even though their burns kept getting worse. I just want to see them well. Hopefully they can go through this process and have complete healing and, and the memories of this will go away as they grow older. His grandsons were flown to Shriners Hospital in Galveston, Texas, after they went to the burn unit at Hillcrest in Tulsa. He says his grandsons are now in good hands, but he and his daughter say it will be a while before they see these smiles again anytime soon. The daycare's owner is not commenting. Authorities in Oklahoma have cited the daycare for infractions 19 times in the past year. Doctors at the Shriners Hospital in Texas say it could be a while before the boys can go home.